On egg, the bracken grows over an area where in the time of the 19th century potato famine, great numbers of potatoes were grown for export because Scotland was in a terrible state. The blight was everywhere, but it never reached egg. In the 30 years since I first came to egg, I've seen a tremendous decline in arable farming. The main emphasis now is in sheep grazing. Only the crofters keep cows now. On an island whose population is divided equally between the north and the south, the post office and shop has been put midway along the island road which connects the two communities. So wherever you live, you have to travel. My way is over a wee pass into a very different Atlantic world of the West. What a marvellous view this is, from the Belloch na Clee to the Crofts of Cougach, with above Ben Bowie, these great crags rising to the skyline, then coming down to the hills of Skye, and then the sweep of Lake Bay, a mile and a half by a mile, and on the other side, the peaks of Rum. Undoubtedly one of the finest views you could possibly see on a day like this anyway in the Hebrides. Quite suddenly you get the whole sweep, the Bay of Leg, a horseshoe of sands sloping up to a man-made pattern of crofting fields right opposite the island of Rum. It was here that the crofters who were evicted from the south of the island below the Scour came to try and build themselves shelters and break in fields. Their descendants still try and win a living the old way, but they are an ageing community, so the land declines. But an Irishman with the name of West Fife, whose wife is English, has rebuilt a ruin which he bought for £5,000 three years ago. He came to the island to work for Mr Schellenberg as a crofter blacksmith. How long had it taken him to get the house and croft in such good shape? Well, for the first year, it took, it took all winter to get the house together and we started in the spring. It's been quite a job getting the ground back into producing something. But it's getting that way now, or one in, you know. And you've got quite a stretch of land below there. How big a stretch is that? It's about eight acres arable, but there's more common grazing up at the top here. And I see you've broken in quite a big patch of potatoes. Yeah, that's looking quite good this year. I've got a little tractor and I've got some bits and pieces, but uh, I can, there's plenty of bits and pieces in the island, uh, neighbours, which you can borrow. I knew Maggie, the wife, to be a very creative person and able to turn her hand to a variety of crafts. How had she made out? Selling the stuff is just in the summertime when the visitors are here, but... Uh, the idea is to do most of the work in the winter time. I make uh, waterproof jackets, fishermen's smocks, slipper socks, and I do some knitting as well. Well, there's a lot of people locally that uh, there's about 10 or 12 people altogether that are involved making one thing or another. We don't get uh, a lot of money by mainland standards, but uh, well, it's an awful lot more fun. You got your compensations. Oh, well, I'll leave you to finish your tea. Back to work. <laughs> Have a look to see one or two of the others now. Right. Cheerio now. Cheerio. Bye-bye. Good luck to the pair of them. They're workers and will do well when they like the life so much. Well, it's the whole Hebridean experience they enjoy. The folk, the weather, the feeling that they belong. In a way, they're having to do what the very first settlers did. Helped, of course, by the tourist trade. One of the crofters who left to better himself but didn't give up the old crofting house as fiddle maker Duncan MacDonald, who brings his materials for his hobby when he comes here in the summer. His forebears were evicted from Gruelan. I asked him about the history of the house. My grandfather moved here and he was in an old ruins of a cottage down there. Then they moved from there to the old byre, which you've seen the ruins of it there and they took most of the stones from that building to build this one and it was completed in 1897. So when these people came from Gruland, they'd say break in these fields, 
carry the stones, clear them, build the walls and everything else. Yes, that's perfectly true, with uh, a two-handed barra carrying them between them and levering them into position with big iron crowbars and sledges. Slave labor. When you were that young, they, everybody had a horse. There was 18 horses from Holland to far off end of Kuger. Every croft had a horse. And uh, for plowing, they paired. One horse wasn't able to pull the plow, and they paired. And uh, that's how they managed to do their, to do their uh, spring work. Every inch was more or less cultivated. It's sad today to see it getting into this state. You wouldn't see a, bl a bracken anywhere. If you were to bed any of your cattle, you had to go away up to the cliffs, to the bottom of the rocks to, g to get uh, bracken for bedding. What? Now it's more or less growing at their windows. Was it a hard life? It was a hard life, but a happy one. I've never known Duncan not to keep himself busy on a violin. It takes him 25 days working an eight-hour day to make one, 200 hours all told, and he doesn't sell them, he gives them away. Another thing, he can't play a note himself, so his wife's opinion on each instrument is his guide. Egg is the kind of island you fall in love with, for its secret corners where you are constantly making discoveries from sea or shore, the movement of the clouds, the wildlife of the ocean, always there's movement. So how does island owner Keith Schellenberg see the future of Egg? Well, uh, I, I hope that it, it will remain, the, the, have the same lovely feel of, of, of something of the old world. I think that's terribly important in all concern, in all interests, and that people can come and see it as they do now. Whether one can have the same sort of tourist business, I rather doubt. What I would love to see, really, is bearing in mind that the wildlife and the conservation aspects are very well taken care of here. I'd love to see something like the Clan Ranald Trust eventually taking it over, and a lot of the McDonald's coming back into it. <laughs> that sounds a good idea. Well, it's, it's the conservation in its extreme form, perhaps. Well, good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Egg is a place where below the crofting township of Cleedale, even the sand sinks and the crags rise behind you to a thousand feet. This lovely bay is known as the Kama Skeeter, and it means the temporary sand because sometimes it disappears and comes back in again. But the popular name is the Bay of the Singing Sands because the grains are very, very coarse, and when you sniff your feet, they sing. It's a high kind of ping sound. Maybe a bit romantic, but a wonderful situation right opposite the island of Rum, that wonderful spine of peaks, rather like the coolings of sky on a miniature scale.
during the time this film was shot, the weather was probably some of the finest I've ever known in the Hebrides. A hot sun with sparkling visibility. Only one kind of dreary day, but even that day cleared up. And what a memory I've taken away of the island of Egg. Probably one of the most charming small islands, yes, I'm going to say it, in the world. Thank you.